Hey, what's up guys, Shane here. So today I'm gonna to be talking about saving money, why it's so important, how I save nearly 70% of my income, and why it's so important that you do this as well. And I've noticed that a lot of videos on YouTube will tell you that it's very important to save your money, track your money, but then they just give you generic advice or they tell you that you need to make a spreadsheet and spend 20 hours a week tracking every single cent that goes in and out of your bank account. So I decided to make a video that goes over the practical steps that I took to save nearly 70% of my income that don't take very much time and they're very easy to do. So first things first, why is saving money so important? Well, chances are right now you're living paycheck to paycheck. And the reason I know this is because I decided to read a bunch of boring studies that basically tell me that over half of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, somewhere around 70%. Now the problem with living this way is that when an emergency comes up, you end up having to go into debt and borrow money in order to pay for it. And this is why the payday loan business in the United States is a $100 billion industry and the total credit card debt in the United States is over a trillion dollars. Now avoiding getting into debt is a very good reason to save, but an even better reason is, is if you have a job right now, chances are you're trading your time for money. And once you get enough money and you save up enough money, what you can do is you can flip this around and you can start trading your money for time and this will buy you freedom. And this freedom will allow you to do whatever you want. So maybe you want to retire early and just lay on the beach all day, or maybe you want to travel the world. Maybe you don't ever want to retire and you just want to build a business that you love. The big point here is that you should start saving right away. So that way your money will start working for you and not against you, and you can gain the freedom to do whatever you want. And then you won't have to worry about everything, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first and by far the most important thing you need to do is you need to get your mindset right. And you really wanna understand the value of a dollar because for the average person watching this channel, $1 invested right now by the time you retire is going to be worth over $20. So whenever you're thinking about buying something, you should imagine that thing in one hand and the money in the other hand. And this is especially important when you think about buying clothes. I mean, think about that you know, $350 golden jacket that doesn't match with anything, so you're probably only gonna wear it twice. Well, when you calculate it out, that's gonna be $175 for each time that you wear it. And if you invested that money instead, it would be worth over $7,000 by the time you retire. And I find that it's really useful to think of your money like little workers or little soldiers that kind of just work for you, and then you send them out in the world to bring you back more money. And that's basically what you're doing whenever you invest your money because of the power of compound interest. Now, the next mindset trick is whenever you're thinking about buying something, if it's a small item, wait until the next day to buy it. And if it's a large item, wait at least a week before you decide to buy it. A lot of the time you'll have an emotion or an impulse that will make you want to buy something. But if you just wait until the next day, that emotion is gone and then you just don't want to buy it anymore. And if you still want it the next day, you can go ahead and buy it or you can do what I do, which is put it on a list of things that I want. And then whenever I achieve a goal, I will look at this list and I'll pick one thing and then I'll get that thing for myself. This is really useful for getting things done because you basically incentivize you doing things that are good for you with things that you naturally want anyways. Speaking of goals, it's very important that you have a clear vision or goal of where you want to be financially. Do you wanna retire by 40? Do you wanna retire by 60? Do you wanna be a millionaire? Do you wanna be a billionaire like Warren Buffett? It's very, very important, and I can't emphasize this enough, that you have a clear vision of where you want to go, and it'll be kind of like a North Star that always leads you in the right direction. And without a clear vision or goal, you'll probably just end up going in circles and not really get anywhere. Now, you don't have to get crazy with this budgeting and become like a minimalist who lives in a van or someone who uses like one ply toilet paper or anything like that. But it is very important for you to keep a budget and this is gonna be my second tip. Now, the first step to making a budget is to go ahead and track what you're spending. And the easiest way to do this is to download an app like Mint. It takes about 15 minutes to set up. You just, you know, connect your credit cards and your debit cards to it, and it automatically tracks all of your purchases. And once you do this, it will be extremely easy to see where your money is going, and then you'll be able to cut back on certain expenses. And you'll probably find that you have a subscription to like RuneScape or something that you haven't used in five years, and you'll get rid of all those. Now, realistically speaking, there's only about five essential needs that everybody has. And in no exact order, these are food, shelter, transportation, clothing, and health. And you'll find that a lot of the non-essential items you can just completely cut out of your life. You just don't need them. You're basically just throwing your money into a black hole. Now, with the essential items, you'll find that you can really cut down on a lot of those expenses. And when I first started doing this a few years back, I was just amazed at how much money I was spending on food. I was spending over $1,000 a month, and most of it was just like going out to expensive dinners with friends, 
uh, eating Chipotle, Starbucks, In-N-Out, you know, all that stuff that you really don't need. And I cut all of that out and now I spend about $300 a month on food. And so that means I have an extra $700 to invest and you know, you can do the math there. Meal prepping by using a crock pot takes almost zero time. It's much cheaper and it's also healthier than just eating out all the time. Now, this is just one example, but honestly, there are a lot of things that you can do this with. You just have to check your Mint app every single month and then just start cutting back or cutting down on expenses that you don't need. Now, an example of cutting costs for shelter would be getting roommates. This can cut your costs in half or maybe even one third. An example of cutting costs with transportation is to not buy a new car. Instead, buy a car that's five to 10 years. It's already taken most of the hit of depreciation and it's gonna be much cheaper insurance. Uh, maintenance, etc. Everything is going to be much cheaper. And for clothing, you can still look really good on a budget. Just focus on, you know, classic pieces like black, white, you know, white shirt, blue jeans, and then things that match really well with black and white. This will never go out of style and you can wear it just about all year round. Now, the next thing you should do is automate everything. You know, you need to have a central bank account where money comes into and then every single month automatically money will get funneled either to a savings account or maybe an investment account. And you just don't have to do anything. They do all the work for you. Now, what I did is I started off with about 15% of my income and then I worked my way up to 50%. And then after a while, I was able to work my way up above 65% or so. And that's where I feel comfortable. And my personal goal is to retire around the age of 35. So saving 65 to 70% is where I'm aiming for. And when you first start saving, it's a good idea to funnel all of your money into a savings account. And then once you have enough saved to where it could cover all of your expenses for six months, then you wanna start putting all of your money into either an index fund, a Roth IRA, some type of investment account, basically. Now, automating things is obviously useful because you don't have to manually, you know, take the time to transfer money from, you know, account A to account B. But the real magic here is it tricks your brain into thinking that you have less money than you actually have. And because of this, a lot of those natural urges to buy stuff will just go away. And the last tip that I have for you is to find things that make you happy that don't cost very much money and then do those things a lot. And I know this sounds stupidly simple, but let me explain. Our brains are so good at tricking us into thinking that doing certain things are good for us when they're actually really bad for us. Think about the bad relationship that you stayed in for too long. Think about all the times where you ate really bad food and then felt crappy afterwards. Think about all the times where you should have been studying when you have a test six hours later, but for some reason you're watching videos on YouTube. Our brains trick us, so it's extremely important for us to identify what actually makes us happy long term not things that make you happy for five seconds and then you feel like crap afterwards. And the key to discovering this is whenever you come across something like this, you must, must, must write it down. Make a list of things on Google Docs or whatever you wanna use. Keep it on your phone at all times so you can access it very easily. So examples of this would be maybe like hiking, playing sports, hanging out with friends. Uh, maybe if you're an adrenaline junkie, Maybe you like to skydive or just do extreme sports, something like that. Whatever it is, identify it and then write it down and then do that thing a lot. So an example for me is I really love making videos and helping people out. I've always loved filmmaking. I've always loved watching films, video editing, that sort of thing. And I like helping people. It makes me feel very fulfilled. And so that's what I do. I make videos that help people. So putting this all together and summing things up, you need to get your mindset right so that you understand the value of a dollar so that you can properly weigh the cost and benefit of all the purchases that you make. Then you need to get a simple app like Mint so that you can make a budget. And then you need to run your finances kind of like a business so you just know what things you're actually spending your money on and what things are essential to your life. After you've done this, you want to automate everything so that your money is automatically going into either a savings account or an investment account. That way you don't even see the money every month and your brain thinks that you don't have any. And the last thing you wanna do in order to avoid boredom, which generally leads to you spending more money, is to find things to do with your free time that make you happy and then do those things a lot. And usually these things won't cost very much money because the best things in life are free. Thanks for watching the video. If you made it this far, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, comment, uh, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. I work really hard on these videos and I appreciate all the feedback you give me. So uh, until next time, bye for now. Why is it so hard to save for retirement? For one thing, it's usually a long way away. But take a second. Visualize yourself in the future. What will you need to live on? How much will life cost? 
it can be hard to imagine. Also, there are plenty of things you have to spend your money on now, like your bills and the people that are depending on you and maybe a vacation. And what about all that cool new stuff out there? We know, but think of saving this way. When you set aside some of your hard-earned money from each paycheck, it's a gift to one of the most important people in your life. You in the future. We all know we've got to save for retirement somehow, sooner or later. And one of the best ways to do it is through your employer's 401k. Why? The number one reason is because it can help you save more money. When you put money away in your 401k account, you may get a tax benefit. On top of that, your earnings aren't taxed until you withdraw many years from now. So you could simply set up your own savings account at the bank, but because you still have easy access to it, you might be tempted to spend it on other things. With a 401k plan, the money is automatically deducted from your paycheck. You won't even see it, so your money is safe from your impulsive self. Then there's the match. If your employer offers matching contributions, it's like getting paid to save, but only if you commit to invest in yourself too. There are lots of good reasons for why to save, but when, there's only one answer, right now. The longer your money stays in the plan, the more it grows. It's almost magic. We call it compounding. And because your earnings aren't taxed until you take the money out, it grows even faster. Let's say at age 25, you start putting away $2,000 every year for 10 years, then stop. You still have more money than if you started at 35 and saved the same amount for 30 years. So no matter when you start, sooner is better. So that's the why and the when. For a lot of people, the hardest part is how. Relax, we've got you covered. The experts at Guided Choice can show you how much you need to save how to invest it in your 401k, and we can even manage your money for you, all online or over the phone. Smart retirement saving is a gift to yourself that keeps on giving. And when you're ready to open that gift, imagine how grateful you'll be for your patience and discipline. You'll thank you. So, don't wonder why, and don't worry about how. Let Guided Choice help you get on track for a secure retirement. Now I've had my midi break and my video schedule routine is back to normal. So if you haven't switched on that notification button or bell, make sure you do so right now. Now as you guys know, I'm up to round three of the thousand dollar project and over the last two, 10 months I have saved almost twenty thousand dollars. It's finishing at the beginning of March and I have a lot of catching up to do because my ultimate goal was actually to save and invest $42,000 over 12 months. Now, by no means am I giving up, throwing the towel in or going to become too disheartened because I know when you do the $1,000 project, you go in bursts and then plateau for a while, bursts and then plateau for a while. And when you put your head, heart and mind to it, you can actually come up with a lot of money in a really short period of time. Now, I thought it would be really fun with this topic and this concern always like burning through my brain of how much catching up I've got, I've got to do was to make a video for you where I share with you 10 really easy, fun, simple money saving hacks where you can save $1,000 at a time, but 10 different ideas. And as I said, they're really fun, really easy and ones that you can actually do with the whole family, kids included. All right, idea number one is actually right behind me and I'm doing this myself because I have some serious catching up to do. That is to grab a five or 600 milliliter bottle and simply fill it with as many $2 coins as possible. So when you get to the brim, there should be a thousand dollars in here. Now it's funny, this has changed my whole attitude towards $2 coins. When I find a $2 coin in the bottom of a handbag or even sometimes in my washing machine, believe it or not, or down the edge of a sofa, I get so incredibly excited. 
even to the point where I don't want to um, break a $2 coin, I like hold on to it and put it in a safe spot until I get home because I'm so excited about putting this in here. But this is a really great idea to do this with kids. And how cool is that? $1,000 simply in a water bottle. Hack number two is actually a money saving chart. Now, to be really honest, I actually found this money saving chart on Instagram and I thought it was such a brilliant idea but it has this grid with all these different numbers and you just randomly pick whatever number you can afford to save that week and simply cross it off you need to do it every week but and throughout the year you'll end up with $1,000 now to make this chart really accessible for you if you click on the link in the video description box below you'll go straight to my website where you can actually print a ready-made money-saving chart just for you but again what a really fun thing you can do and if you're having a tight budget that week you just simply pick a small number but if you're having a week where you've been really frugal with money and you've got some spare money dare to go with a higher number but if you can just follow it and stick to the money-saving chart there is your $1,000 Idea number three is to join a rewards program like Cash Rewards. So Cash Rewards is really quick, easy and simple to do. You sign up and all you need to do is actually shop through their website. There is a whole range of different shops and brands that you can do online. And essentially, you're getting paid commission on your own shopping. And they also have amazing savings on top where you can get $15 off. 10% off, um, extra bonus commission, and throughout the year, even if you just do your grocery shopping and maybe do your insurances, there is $1,000 back in your pocket so quick and easy. Hack number four is to take your lunch to work just one day per week. Where I work, lunches cost about $20. A salad will normally around be about $16 and maybe a coffee or a water or a juice would be another $4. So if you can just take your lunch to work one day per week, this should save you on average $20 per week. If you can do this throughout the year, there is another $1,000 for you. Hack number five is a little bit more complicated but really achievable. Essentially, you save a certain amount of money each week. So week one you save one dollar and you go all the way through up into week 11 where you start to save fifteen dollars. Then for a certain number of weeks you simply save twenty dollars and then you incrementally increase it up to a maximum of thirty five dollars per week. Once you've hit that thirty five dollars per week you then start working backwards. So once you're halfway it actually gets easier and easier as you work back towards just simply saving the lowest of being one dollar. Now again I have made this really fun and easy and accessible for you so if you click on the other link in the video description box below you will see this other secondary money saving chart. Hack number six is to simply put $20 per week into a jar. Let it add up throughout the year and when it comes to the end of December you can crack it open and do something with that $1,000, but so easy, a fantastic habit and routine to create for yourself. And you never know if you do this, next year you might want to make it $40 or $50 and save even more money. Hack number seven is to make your own coffee at home. Now this is something I've incorporated into my life and I'm actually so glad I've done this because when I go to a coffee shop, I can't just get a coffee, I have to get banana bread or a muffin or some little sweet treat. So it doesn't end up costing me $4, it ends up costing me $10, which is not great for my health. So I actually make myself a coffee every morning at home. And yes, I still do support my local cafes, but there's something really nice about enjoying a coffee in the privacy of your own home. And I'm loving the savings that it's creating for me. Hack number eight, and I am actually dedicated to doing this this weekend, and that is to declutter and sell your stuff. Now I am a minimalist but I'm always amazed as to how much stuff I can declutter and of course how much my stuff can be worth. Now you don't need to sell lots and lots of different things and make it really hard but just a few key pieces in your home. Remember things like furniture, clothing, accessories, those things are really quite valuable and you'd be amazed one man's trash is another man's treasure. So make the most of the Gumtree apps, eBay apps, they're so quick and easy to use and to post your stuff. And of course you've always got your local Facebook groups. Hack number nine I'm so excited about because I'm actually going to be doing this this weekend. And that is to have one budget friendly, low key, quiet weekend at home. So today is Saturday and I'm pretty much going to hang out at home. 
I'm going to watch some documentaries on Netflix that you guys have actually recommended to me, so I'm so incredibly excited. Tomorrow I'm going to read my book, maybe go for a walk down to the beach, and just have a really simple, quiet weekend. Now, assuming that I can save $85 this weekend by just not spending, not going and grabbing dinner with friends, or um, going out and spending money in a bar, or Ubers and things like that, that's going to be money in my pocket. And if I can do this at least one time per month throughout the year, there is another $1,000 for me. And the final hack, hack number 10, which is my favorite number, and that is to have one budget-friendly meal per week. Now, in my household, I try and budget dinner around about $40 per night. And that is dinner for myself, Tom and Rocco. Sometimes we might go over if I bought some like, beautiful produce that's quite gourmet, and sometimes I'll go under. But I will make sure at least one time per week we have a really budget-friendly meal. And I try and keep that below $20. And that will be simple things like, as my mother always used to say to me, eat up all the bits, all the things that have been left over during the week, and make it like a smorgasbord plate. Or fill up on vegetables, use things like pasta, rice, things like that that are still super healthy, still going to give you heaps of nutritional value, but they're not going to break the bank. So if you can try and save about $20 per week off your food plan through mindful budgeting on your groceries, again, throughout the year, this can really add up. So guys, I really hope you realize that saving $1,000 is not overwhelming or intimidating. You can actually do it really easily. It's about creating financial goals for yourself so you feel motivated and determined to achieve this. It's about creating fantastic habits where you don't even think about it, you just simply do it. And it's also about making sure that that goal has a great purpose. Are you going to use that $1,000 to pay off your credit card debt? Are you going to use that $1,000 to help pay for your next holiday? Are you going to use that thousand dollars to put towards a deposit on your first home? Remember, the sky is the limit and it's your money, so you get to decide where it goes. Now, on that note, I have a very exciting giveaway for you. For anyone who is watching this video and has other cool, creative, fun hacks or ways to quickly save one thousand dollars, I would love it if you could share it in the comments box below. And the person who has comes up with the best idea and has subscribed to my channel and has also liked Sugar Mama TV on Facebook and subscribed to my website, you will actually receive not just a signed copy of the thousand dollar project from me, but you'll also receive a handwritten letter from me. So I'm really excited about doing this giveaway. I've never done it before. So I would love to see if you guys actually like this idea because I'm actually thinking about doing this on a regular basis with my other favorite financial books. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. Don't forget to switch on the notification button because the video red schedule or routine is back for 2019 and I am so excited. All right, everyone, have a great week and I'll see you soon. Ciao.